the movie begins its dramatic narrative in the vast, wild landscapes of Australia. The story commences with a catastrophic event as a massive wildfire rages through the forest, threatening the delicate balance of the ecosystem. Miraculously, the fire is extinguished before it can consume the entirety of the forest. However, in an unexpected and chilling turn of events, a mysterious creature emerges from the depths of the shadows, its presence marked by a brutal attack on a pair of unsuspecting kangaroos. This harrowing scene is captured by a tracking camera, setting a spooky tone for the story. Approximately a year after this incident, the plot thickens as a team comprising a documentary filmmaker named Bailey, a dedicated conservationist named Grace, and a highly skilled master field biologist named Ben ventures into the heart of the same forest. Their mission is filled with challenges as they delve into regions so remote that satellite signals cannot penetrate. Their safety hinges on an emergency beacon carried by Grace, their only lifeline should they find themselves in danger. As they journey deeper into the forest, Ben shares his aspiration to discover and name a new species after himself. The trio then abandons their vehicle to continue on foot, plunging into the dense underbrush, with Bailey documenting each step of their expedition. Ben takes this opportunity to educate his companions about the advanced devices they use in their research. These gadgets, activated by heat and motion, are essential tools in their quest to locate and study various marsupial species inhabiting the forest. Ben reveals that they regularly collect data from these devices, a vital process in their conservation efforts. He passionately explains that their findings are crucial in preventing logging activities in areas with significant populations of target species. Despite this, Ben expresses his frustration and disillusionment when their hard-earned data is occasionally ignored and logging proceeds regardless of their efforts. In a moment of reflection, Grace acknowledges their shared commitment to animal welfare. She candidly admits that their greatest adversary is not the natural world, but humanity itself. Despite the overwhelming odds, Grace underscores the importance of planning for the future, no matter how uncertain it may seem. She believes in the power of resilience and the necessity to persist in their endeavors. In the face of repeated failures and setbacks, they must gather the strength to rise once again and continue their crucial work. The narrative continues to unfold with Bailey capturing the day-to-day -day activities of the two scientists, Grace and Ben. Through Bailey's lens, we get an insightful look into their conservation efforts and the strategies they employ to preserve various species in the wake of the devastating fires. Grace takes the lead in explaining their methodical approach to recording the distribution of the different species that have survived the fires. They meticulously gather baseline data, which serves as a crucial reference point for monitoring gradual ecological changes over time. Bailey, driven by curiosity, questions the diversity of species in the aftermath of such a disaster. Grace enlightens her by mentioning that sometimes an increase in diversity is observed. This occurs when animals, having lost their original habitats to the fires, are compelled to seek new homes. However, this migration is not without its challenges. The new arrivals often find themselves in conflict with the existing residents of these territories, leading to tense and sometimes dangerous encounters. Ben jumps in, adding a layer of complexity to the situation. He notes that although the animals are resilient and making a comeback, the forest's reduced size has resulted in a scarcity of resources. This shortage means that the animals are more prone to hunger. He vividly describes the peak feeding time, which occurs an hour after sunset, as a tense competition for food. Ben likens this to a crowded restaurant where everyone arrives simultaneously. He notes that some organisms inadvertently find themselves on the specials board, becoming the target of other hungry animals in a cruel twist of fate. The movie then takes a darker turn as we are introduced to Gary, a man who indulges in hunting for sport and sustenance. One night, in a disturbing scene, Gary kills a kangaroo and consumes it. However, the peace of the night is shattered when his dog strays from the campsite, followed by a faint whimper. Armed and cautious, Gary investigates, only to stumble upon a macabre scene of fresh organs scattered on the ground. In a heart-stopping moment, he too becomes a victim of the mysterious creature lurking in the forest. A gripping and emotionally charged scene unfolds when Bailey recounts a haunting memory from her childhood. She vividly describes a school trip to the zoo that took an unexpected turn. The children, including Bailey, witnessed a gorilla suddenly noticing a small creature in its enclosure. The gorilla's reaction was both swift and brutal, as it captured the creature and violently hit it against a rock, leading to its death. 
The scene was distressing, particularly for the young children who watched in horror. They screamed and their parents rushed to shield them from the traumatic sight. The gorilla, not content with merely killing the creature, then displayed a chilling show of dominance by holding up the lifeless animal and pounding its chest. This incident left a profound impact on Bailey, prompting her to approach a zookeeper and plead for intervention. However, the zookeeper's response was disheartening as they refused to intervene, citing that entering the gorilla's territory was not within their responsibilities. Later in the movie, as night falls in the forest, the sounds of nocturnal animals fill the air, instilling fear in Bailey. Seeking comfort and safety, she decides to share a sleeping space with Grace. In this vulnerable moment, Bailey confides in Grace about a deeply personal loss, her brother, who tragically died in a fire the previous year. The next morning, the group sets out towards their car to collect footage from some tracking cameras. As they journey, they come across several cameras, but nothing noteworthy is captured on them. The terrain soon becomes too challenging for their vehicle, forcing them to continue on foot. After walking for a couple of miles, they find a stream and decide to take a break. While Ben steps away for a moment, Grace and Bailey stumble upon an old house, presumably built years ago by people who had hoped to find gold in the area. Their discovery continues as they find another camera. The footage reveals a rare animal being attacked by an indistinct creature. Ben and Grace speculate on what could have killed it and decide to report their findings to Matt, the park ranger. Bailey, meanwhile, notices intriguing claw marks on a tree, capturing the interest of both Grace and Ben. Ben proposes setting a bait to lure the mysterious animal before Matt arrives with the intention of killing it, fearing it might escape identification. As the trio prepares their camera trap, Matt embarks on his journey to join them. His route leads him to Gary's campsite, which he finds eerily abandoned. The unsettling discovery of Gary's gun and his dog intensifies the mystery, leaving Matt perplexed and concerned about what may have transpired in the depths of the forest. Soon after, Ben presents an intriguing theory about the mysterious creature they're tracking. He proposes that it might be a carnifex, a term he uses to describe a large carnivorous marsupial that predominantly operates nocturnally and is likely to dwell in trees. This theory seems to align with the variations in fur color they've observed. However, Gray Grace challenges Ben's hypothesis. She points out a crucial detail. The creature responsible for the scratches on the tree has two thumbs, a trait not characteristic of the Carnifex, which is known to have only one thumb. Ben, undeterred, suggests the possibility that this creature might be a subspecies of the Carnifex. He supports his argument by drawing parallels with the Somali elephant shrew a species once thought to be extinct but surprisingly rediscovered in the desert. Grace, however, highlights the vast time gap between the last confirmed sighting of the Thylacaleo carnifex, which is estimated to be around 50,000 years ago, and the recent rediscovery of the elephant shrew after a mere 50-year absence. Ben speculates that these creatures might have been coexisting peacefully with other forest inhabitants for years. Their migration towards human settlements triggered only by the devastating fires that destroyed destroyed their habitat, Bailey interjects, expressing confusion about the technical nature of their discussion. Grace then shares that the creature they are discussing is actually the real-life inspiration behind the fictional Drop Bears, a story often told to scare tourists. Bailey is taken aback, having always believed that Drop Bears were purely a product of fiction, meant to frighten visitors. Ben confirms that while the concept of Drop Bears is indeed fictional, it is loosely based on a real creature, which, he clarifies, bears no actual resemblance to bears. Concerned for their safety, Bailey seeks reassurance from Ben and Grace about the potential danger posed by this creature. Further deepening the intrigue, Ben, speaking directly to the camera, elaborates on his theory about the carnifex and its hunting behavior. He draws an analogy to ancient Rome, where the term carnifex was used to refer to a public executioner, which translates to the maker of meat. He then takes his theory back millions of years to the era of dinosaurs, explaining how the ancient ancestors of marsupials were significantly larger than their modern counterparts. The T. carnifex, according to Ben, was one such formidable animal. Ben describes the Carnifex as a highly territorial and dangerous predator, likening its hunting style to that of an ambush predator, similar to a tiger in the forest. Unlike a lion that chases its prey across open ground, the Carnifex prefers to stalk its prey stealthily before launching a sudden, lethal attack. 
Ben vividly illustrates the moment of attack, detailing how the Carnifex aims for the jugular and severs the spinal cord with deadly accuracy. In a gripping and unexpected twist, as Ben elucidates his theory, the movie takes a darker turn. Matt encounters the Carnifex in a manner exactly as Ben described, an intense and dramatic moment that aligns with Ben's detailed explanation of the creature's hunting method. This chilling scene not only adds to the suspense of the movie, but also proves Ben's theory, underscoring the imminent danger that lurks within the forest. The story continues to escalate with a tense sequence involving the main characters, Bailey, Ben, and Grace. While exploring the forest, the trio comes across a wild goat, but their observation quickly turns into a horrifying scene as the goat is suddenly attacked and killed by the elusive Carnifex. The creature demonstrates its power and agility by dragging the goat up a tree. Determined to capture this rare and dangerous animal on film, the trio sends a drone up the tree. However, the Carnifex, sensing the intrusion, quickly flees the scene. In a desperate bid to get footage of the Carnifex, Ben impulsively chases after it, with Grace following close behind. However, their pursuit leads to a dangerous turn of events when Grace falls into a hole. Ben, attempting to rescue her, is suddenly attacked and taken by the Carnifex. Meanwhile, Bailey, who had briefly left to seek help, sees a ranger car passing by. In a moment of intense suspense, the Carnifex descends into the hole where Grace lies motionless, trying to avoid detection. The creature stands over her, creating a sense of imminent danger. Just then, Bailey finds Gary's car and turns on a red light, which attracts Gary's dog. The presence of the dog seems to distract the Carnifex, allowing Grace to escape from the hole. Grace, now out of immediate danger, runs to the abandoned house they had discovered earlier and takes refuge inside. Here, we see Ben, injured and crawling on the floor. Grace, too, bears scratches from her encounter with the Carnifex. They hastily tend to their wounds, but their peace is short-lived as the Carnifex attacks again, this time fatally wounding Ben. In a panic, Grace rushes out of the house to find Bailey, who is waiting in Gary's car. Together, they attempt to find Ben, but the grim discovery of his bloodied knife confirms their worst fears. Determined to escape the forest and the terror of the Carnifex, they race towards their car. However, their escape plan is unsuccessful when their car gets stuck. In a desperate attempt to free the vehicle, Grace ties it to a tree. But as Bailey tries to drive out, the rope snaps, causing the car to flip over and crash. Injured and trapped in the crashed car, Bailey faces a direct attack from the Carnifex. Displaying remarkable courage, she defends herself with a shovel, managing to fend off the creature. As the Carnifex drags Bailey out of the car, Gary's dog heroically intervenes, attacking the creature. Grace, armed with a gun containing only one bullet, faces a moral dilemma. She is reluctant to kill such a rare and endangered species, understanding its natural instinct to hunt. In a tense standoff, she aims at the Carnifex, but before she can fire, the creature, perhaps sensing the threat or losing interest, leaves the area. The plot reaches its emotional climax as Grace and Bailey embrace, relieved that their nightmarish encounter has finally ended. As the rain begins to pour, symbolizing a sense of cleansing and renewal, Bailey and Grace gather their equipment. The movie concludes with the duo walking out of the forest, bruised and battered but alive, accompanied by their newfound canine companion, Gary's dog.